Hello everybody, it's Pam at the Paper Outpost and it is craft chat time as well as scrappy contest announcement of the winner time. <laughs> and uh, um, we're going to be making some neutral clusters of a different type so they can go in the neutral in the neutral uh, journal that we're making. Okay, so let's uh, let's just get started and make a few neutral punches, but let's ans answer the first question. Linny Daniels asks, Pam, can you display some, I thought this was a funny question because I'll tell you what happened. Uh, Pam, can you display some items from your merchandise store at the end of some of your videos? Question mark. You show your Fabrifix bottle and scissors. Time to toot your own horn, sister. And uh, she's a smiley face. I thought that was very sweet. So I made a valiant attempt. I got my butt off the chair and I walked into the kitchen to find my two mugs. They are both in the dishwasher in the middle of the cycle. And then I went to get my sweatshirt which, which personally I, I really do love. It's a very, very soft, cuddly sweatshirt and I live in it <laughs> um, when it's chilly in the house. So it's literally in the, la like in the wash, like the laundry, the machine is going and it's in there. So, um, well, there you go. So next time, next time I will show you. Um, okay, so here we have some coffee dyed paper. I did this with some stencils, just spritzed the, um, coffee dye in a spritzer through the uh, uh, stencil. Got some cool images and I just thought I'd punch out some shapes. Yeah, going with the neutral theme here. Not, um, oh, is this one not working? Oh, you're not working? Oh, great, that was a great start. Yeah, hey, now where's my oh, waxed paper where I could get that fixed? We'll just forget about you for a while. We'll move on. You have no idea what happened to him. He used to be a great punch, what happened? Maybe you want more than uh, one sheet. Let's see, these guys are happy with one sheet, right? Don't make me look bad here. This is an EK uh, punch. Now we're hoping all goes well. That's the sound we want, that nice, uh, that sound. Oh, that's great. Yeah, let's just keep going with that. We can do that. All right, we'll figure that other guy out later. He's usually pretty reliable. I don't know what happened to him. He pooped out. That's okay. Well, no, we have, we have others. Here's a... Um, uh, tag punch. So let's try that. Get some, oh, what'd I do? Oh, these punches got, you know, they're, they're, it's a love, love, hate thing with these things. You either love them or you hate them. <laughs> uh, but see if we can get some shapes and carry on. When they work, they work well. When they don't work well, well, that's a different story. But uh, I felt bold in getting them out and again tonight. See, this little thing about getting the paper out is always a bit of a, oh, yeah, did that look simple? Okay, we got you over there, but it's all right because we have stuff to play with. Look at all this. We've got, we've got bases. We got bases, so that's awesome. Maybe I'll get me old uh, dauber out. All right, there it is, the old, worn out, well-saturated brown dauber of the paper outpost, and uh, gonna be grabbing the old Distress Oxide Vintage Photo tonight. Yeah, just for fun. Maybe I'll just ink these up while we're here and I'll answer another question. Um, let's see. Pamela Allen Sanders asks, I'm overwhelmed with paper supplies. Oh, I answered this one already. So sorry. I answered that on my uh, podcast. Um, let's see. I think I answered that one. Hold on. I forgot to mark them. Okay, uh, Laura Olivo asks, how do you know what theme you want for your journal if you do not have your signature pages picked out yet? Um, I have done a few themed journals, not a lot, uh, but I found that um, they're much more laborious. It takes a lot more effort and work to organize the whole project because you've got to look for um, I, uh, things that will enhance the theme of whatever you're doing. And it's a lot more legwork, a lot more research. It's fun. And I will generally do that for a family member or a close friend or something. But in general, what I really like to do, <laughs> and this is, uh, and I, I do encourage for you to do what you like to do, um, is uh, eclectic journals that have a little bit of this and a little bit of that, maybe a splash of botanical, a splash of Victorian, and a lot of freedom. 
And just to, to you know, because I'm working on journals for many days, um, as you are too, I'm sure. And often you feel differently on different days. So someday you're all about, some days you're all about the butterfly and you are Mrs. Butterfly Pants and you're putting butterflies everywhere. The next day you might be into uh, Victorian tea uh, symbols and you're putting that all over the place. You know how, you know what I mean? So I, I kind of go with it and um, I... I have a lot of fun doing that, and that way uh, I can just go whichever way the imaginative wing wind takes me. Um, so your actual question was, uh, how if you if how do you know what theme you want for your journal if you don't if you do not have your signature pages picked out yet? Well, you can literally transfer and transform any signature page to match your theme. So if you put a, a bunch of, let's say you have a bunch of coffee dyed pages with some random things on there, depending on how you decorate those, uh, you can amplify a theme. Uh, for example, you know, if you're doing an Alice in Wonderland theme, I mean, you could have something with a rabbit down here and a clock up there and maybe a Queen of Hearts card over here. So it, they don't actually have to be Alice in Wonderland specific things from an Alice in Wonderland book or anything like that. You can use elements from the theme on a regular piece of paper or scrapbook paper or blank uh, printer paper and develop your theme from there. So you're, you're never stuck is what I want to say is that you can go ahead and make the, the basic um, journal. You can make your cover and your signatures and, and have that all together like all the pages on the inside and then decide your theme. Yep, you definitely can. Uh, no problem at all. No problem at all. Um, you can certainly decide ahead of time too. That's fine. Oh, these look how cool already. Don't they look cool already? You know what I want to do with these? I'm like, I was thinking, okay, let's glue little things to them, but I'm going to say no. I'm saying no. She's saying no. What, what are you going to do? I feel like I want to stamp words on them. I'm just going to grab some words. Hold on. Don't go anywhere. Okay. I just discovered something very cool and it's a piece of tape. And what I found was I had put my word stamps into like a printer's drawer where it has these tiny little um, spaces for these things. And I was trying to use a um, uh, emery board, not an emery board, a nail file to dig them out because they were wedged in there. I couldn't, I couldn't grab them. They were deep into the little um, shelf and uh, I was trying to get, and it wasn't working, wasn't working. But all of a sudden I thought of tape and I just stuck the tape to the front of it and they came right out. So there you go. There, there's the 25 cent tip for the day. And it's only a piece of tape. There you go. <laughs> I'm like so happy right now. Um, all right, I think I'm going to use black ink as soon as I locate the black ink. Dun, 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 dun. This is black soot, distressing the regular stuff. And it goes through. I think I'm going to wet this just a smidge roux because it's a little dry. Okay. And. I'm just going to randomly stamp some. I'm going to be very professional about it today. That's right. I'm, I'm going to bring out my foam board. This is my stamping foam board. It's not even a board. It's a foam sheet. Yep. And uh, I'm just going to put it on here and stamp on here because it gives a nice image. Make sure there's nothing underneath me like this paper clip. And we can do this. Let's see. Okay. Oh, it's a little warm in here tonight. Okay. Now, I'm going to pick a word. I hope these words fit. Here's beauty. That's a nice word. Okay. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. Okay. Not the perfect stamp, but it looks very pretty, I think. And um, the number two is coming. Okay. We did beauty. Spirit. Now I know you're going to ask, Pam, where did you get your stamps? These were purchased as used stamps on eBay or Etsy. I, I generally buy used stamps mostly, unless I totally fall in love with some stamp somewhere. And uh, these, these actually could be used just as they are and stuck on a page and that would look really cute. You can put them on an angle that would look really cute. You could turn these into page tabs and that would look really cute. You might do that. I don't know. I just I haven't decided what their purpose is yet, but we shall see. We shall see create. That's a good one. But uh, yeah, I think I typed in word stamps or oh, that was that was a good one. OK, now now I'm looking like a professional stamper. Um, that rarely happens. Um, uh, you can use these to decorate other embellishments. It's just, you can you pre-stamp a bunch of these and then ha just have them at the ready. Okay, it didn't go so well. But we'll fill it in maybe with, uh, I got it edge in. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Let me look under here. Why did that happen? I don't know. Uh, you know, sometimes these things, they just happen. And you carry on 
And can I overstamp on it? Um, probably. You know, I'll, I'll, the likelihood of me getting the exact spot is low. So maybe I'm going to come in with a different color and, and that might make it look like a shadow back image. Let's just try it for fun. What the heck? It's only a piece of paper, right? Let's try it. Okay, good. This is a vintage photo. Okay, here we go. Trying to line it up. Won't happen. Oh, not bad. But I think you can get the word as more noticeable that way. And the, the, the fact that it's a little bit off center, I think it looks kind of cool. I know there's something about it that looks nice. I mean, really, look at this versus this. What do you think? Mm hmm? Okay. Um, let's carry on. A few more stampers. Uh, short words, please. Short words. Angel, that's a very nice word. Was uh, the name of one of my dogs. Yeah. Okay, there we go. That's, I think I'm getting low on black there. I have really used this black thing up forever. Okay, that's a nice one. That came out good. And Wander. That's a nice one. So these can be used for many different things in your junk journal, or as clusters, or as embellishments, or they can be added to embellishments, added to envelopes. Oh, that's nice on that side. Um, of course, I have the ink on this side. Well, we'll just go with that side then. Now, what are you? You are beauty. Oh, we did you. Yeah, no, we, we need uh, others. Journey. Now, this one is too long. Let's see what happens when I use this one. Will it? Maybe I can put it on an angle and still get the word. Let's try. Ah, I did it! Yay! There you go. So you can sometimes uh, tweak it and make it. Yeah, what's this? Create, we did that. Spirit, we did that. Imagine, we did that. Inspire, we don't have inspire. Okay, this is another long one. Let's see if we can do it again. All right, here we go. And we made it! Yay! There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Doesn't take much to excite this crafter. Um, okay, let's do another answering of a question and I'm hearting as I go so I remember where I left off um, um oh it adds, adds that one okay hang on I gotta find fresh questions hold on okay I found fresh question uh Jodin Poupard Jodin Poupard asks I love glitter I recently made my first junk journal and struggled to give it to the new owner how do you know which ones to give and which ones to sell Good question. Um, my answer was I ran out of space and I had to start selling some because they were pouring out of my arms and my hands like at a crazy rate where um, I was literally, literally running out of room in the house. So it became mandatory to sell some. I still, I still have a lot of my original journals that I like to keep just for historical purposes. Um, and also to capture my journey as I was learning and also a way to remember techniques that I have completely forgotten about um, that were fun to revisit as I look through old journals. So um, that's a hard question. It's a personal call. Um, I think if you make enough journals, eventually you want to share that good feeling with uh, somebody else. And then you also take a look at how much you've invested in supplies and you think, it would be nice to make some of that back possibly and there's actually a very good market out there for um, handmade junk journals it's a beautiful art a beautiful craft and more of the world is starting to become exposed to it and aware of it and um, if you've ever made a journal or tried to make a journal you understand the journal journey and um, um, also you might understand how bonded you become to your journal because you've been there together with your journal through every page through every cut through every glue and there's a lot of emotion tied to that you remember how you felt on that one day when you're making that or what you were thinking on that other day or when something happened on another page on another day um it's a toughie you know to sell the journals um but i think the more you sell them the better it, it, it's not so hard to let go of a journal because then you start to create them for the purpose of selling them because you want to release them to the universe to go do some good and also replenish your coffers so that you can go buy more stuff that you really don't need right yes we know and um it's i think it's a good healthy crazy paper craft addiction thing doesn't cause much danger to the world other than maybe being squashed by your own supplies and releasing a few artsy goods out there into the universe and maybe inspiring a few others to do the same um, it's a very unique special uh, creation that you don't come by all that often all the time um, 
And even though we think, oh, there's so many people and there's so many junk journal channels and this and that, not really compared to um, card making or scrapbook making. Everybody has heard of that. Everybody's familiar with that. I ask every day when I go out, uh, have you ever heard of a junk journal? Nope, blank stares. Blank stares like, like um, bats in the belfry flying around in their brain trying to grasp. I had a woman today look at me and go and said, I've never heard of it, but I can just imagine what that might look like. And she gave me that, uh, that kind of, I don't know whether it was Greta Garbo or Betty Davis eye look. <laughs> and uh, I just had to smile because she was adorable. She was, she's 83 and she, uh, this is a cool star. She has, um, uh, we were talking about ephemera because the bottom of her house, she donated to the local museum. They brought in all their old things, a lot of them ephemera, and even there was a Sears and Roebuck catalog um, back from 1902, I think. And um, uh, a lot of paper ephemera, very neat. And so she had an uh, understanding of old things and old papers, and we, we connected right away. She lived upstairs, it was very cool. Very 83 years old, walks up and down those stairs, just does dandy, way to go. Way to go, Betty. <laughs> um, okay, that was a great question. Let's see, where are we talking about? Okay, yep, we're good. Um, Minna Parrish asks, um, oh, she's asking about the telegram thing. Yes, uh, If I, I think I forgot to mention this, but if you got um, a message which looked like it came from me as a comment to you, commenting back to you on one of your comments on my videos, it was not me. It was a spammer, hoaxer, trickster, troller, and they were just trying to cause some mayhem. And I had a lot of people contact me because it, it all made them sound like they won a contest. And um, that was not from me. That was artificially generated. I've done my best to go back in there and remove and block as many as I could find. There may still be some, and I've tried to respond to everybody who contacted me, but if I haven't contacted you, um, please know that that was not real. And I'm, I'm so sorry that that happened. And all I can do is let YouTube know and try and block and things like that. And yeah, that, you know, I don't know, people have better things to do. Now, if we could get that person to make a junk journal, their life would be so much happier, right? Right. Okay. Um, Butterfly Gardener says, Pam, do you need to prep the buttons because they're a smooth surface? Won't the paint, glue, etc., pop off the smooth plastic or metal? My mom's birthday is the 29th. Aw. Um, yeah, I mean, you could rough it up with a little bit of um, like a sanding block or a um, sanding paper or even a nail file to give it some grit. Anytime you can do that, that's good. You can also paint on some gesso, which naturally gives things a bit of a tooth so that you can paint on top of that white base and then it'll grab better. But yeah, I think um, sanding it would be a good idea. Um, a good addition to that little uh, project. Otherwise you might get the bubble, you know, like how paint kind of, you know, separates if it can't grab, that type of thing. Um, I answered that one. Okay, hold on, gotta find more. Okay, here is a question from Faith Ann Ellis. She says, uh, when you remove old book pages from the cover, how do you rectify inside cover spine mold, please? Um, cheers from Australia. Okay, so I'm thinking two things here. Um, I'm thinking if she's actually talking about fungus mold, yeah, you don't want to mess with that stuff and probably get rid of the book or the pages. But if it's mold as in the shape of the spine, rectify inside cover spine mold, Maybe she means like if it's a rounded spine, how do you how do you keep that intact? Um, how, where's the video? Did I just put it out? I think on Monday. Um, it's not a rounded spine, but it's um, an easy way to make um, a journal. And I also showed using um, the Undine Digi Kit. But I showed how to... No, I didn't. That's not true. Uh, retreat. Go back to how to make a neutral journal, the cover video, which I think just came out Wednesday, I think. Okay, well, anyway, it's, it's in this week, I believe. And um, the, I show you how to reinforce the spine. And, to, and if you have a rounded spine, it should, if you should still be able to tape everything in there. And if you don't want to glue or sew your signature block or your text block or your clump of book pages directly to the spine, it, you can take a piece of cardboard or chipboard and have some fly wings on it that glue to either of the inside covers of the front and the back cover and leave that space 
behind so that the rounded spine has um, can stay rounded and not glued to the back of. Can I? Is there anything here I can demonstrate that with? Have you got any? Like we would like an example, please. You have nothing. That's great. Okay, that's not very good. But pretend that's rounded. Okay, there. That's rounded. Now if I. And so I don't glue anything to this. Maybe I reinforce this so, so this doesn't tear and attach it to little wings on here with some material or something. Um, but then when I'm inserting my bl signature block of, or text block of signatures, I just glue them to the front and the back and I don't glue them here. Now, whatever that is, whether it's material or whether it's um, material over a piece of chipboard or cardboard, you can sew your signatures right into that piece before you glue it in here. I should demonstrate that in a video. That was a horrible explanation. <laughs> All right, we'll put that on the list and we'll show that. Okay, so um, I think some of these we'll, we'll have a little fun play here with. Let's see, we have some more of this paper left over. Do we have more of this? Um, well, let me let's just do some tearing. I feel like doing some tearing today. And there are my, okay, we have the well, you're going to become altered paper clips again? Yeah, we need a few more of those. Uh, I can't keep up with them. I can't make them that fast. I do my best. Um, I don't know why I'm using the circle that, that almost was. Hmm. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. Let's see. Okay. You go in the back there? You're almost small enough. Okay, we're just using you as something to glue to. Where's my glue? Oh, excuse me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Okay, here we have my little... Oh, glue caddy. All right, let's put this in here as we do. The small, the small loop on the inside. Okay, the longer loop on the outside. I don't know, it just seems to make sense. And then we just glue whatever it is together. Okay, we're going to glue that together. This is just printer paper, 20 pound printer paper, regular old printer paper, nothing fancy. And I'm just going to glue that on the back here. That's it. That's all I'm doing. Um, and it's going to serve its purpose and make us proud. There we go. Now, if you you could decorate more on the back if you want to. Like, if you're like, oh, it looks too naked, you could come along and ink it up a little bit more to give it a little bit of a rustic look. But nobody's really looking back there because we're going to use this to attach something. Isn't that cute? That's a cute little altered paper clip. I like that. All right, so we have another one. So let's just use it up. We're here on this double imagine. Yep, very imaginative. Okay, make it fit. With the strength of our will, by the seat of our pants, and we put the little loop in the middle, as we do. Ooh, there's a glue coming out all over the place. Yep, that's, that was great. Okay, but that's way more glue than we really need. And I'll put a little glue here. Do, 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 do. Oh, I haven't sung for you in a while. I should sing again. How do we want this to go? Well, let's maybe put it this way. So that means it's going to come in. I think I'm going to put it there. Because if I put it in the middle, this is going to stick out. And I don't want it to stick out too much. So I'm going to put it over there. See how I did that? Put it over there. So when I turn it around, see it's there. It's close to the edge. So if I slide it on the, a page, that's a great demonstration, Pam. Um, if you slide it on a page, the whole thing will be on the page if you, if you have it all the way over there. So that is what I would do. Yep, there. Fascinating tidbits. Rocket science. Hurtling out. At lightning speed, let's just share some more of this. Let's use it up. No reason this should go to waste. It's pretty, isn't it? I like it. Yeah. Um, maybe a little wide. Okay. Uh, let's get another little. These are fun. And this is a very nice mass making project. You're just making some basic, neutral, calm, relaxing, can be used in any junk journal, altered paper clips. That's right. Okay, so this one, let's try and get it to work It's as if it's going to be put on the right side of the page, yeah. So you have to kind of think about it as you're doing it, like where you're going to put it. So think about it. I'm going to put it really close to the edge so it'll go on the page as much as possible. There we go. That's it. Done. Okay. Carry on. Now see, now these, these got stamped opposite. See how the tag shape is this way, but the tag shape is that way. And it just happens that way sometimes. Um, grab more paper. Okay, That's some nice paper. Okay. All right, fold it in half. And um, 
I think there's something very powerful about the torn edge. I don't know what it is. Okay, I'm, I'm putting the glue down even before I have the paper clip. That was, that was renegade. Okay, let's, let's try it. Now, this is how you get glue on your fingers. That's right. That's how it's done. Right before your eyes. And then let's get some more glue down. Because that's what we do. We basically rip, cut, tear, glue. All right, so now those are done. How about wander? Hey, you're going to wander in from which side? This side? Okay. You don't have to think about it long. Oh, look, I didn't, I didn't tear nicely. You know what? That's okay. I'm just going to leave that. I'm just going to ink it. There'll be some little mysterious thing peeking out there. Yeah, yeah, maybe put on a little angle. I don't know why. There, that's good. Hmm? Okay. Um, we got a journey. Let's see if we can get some more paper. So I hope you're having fun. Getting your fun, fun quota today. Your vitamin of fun. If it lives in the paper, that it might because you're here. So maybe it does, right? Or you're exploring, trying to see if this is something you might be interested in. Or you're looking at all of us going, what on earth are these people doing playing with paper? Don't they know that's for children? That's for children. They cut and glue paper. It's kindergarten. And we, like, we say, we know, it's wonderful. <laughs> we had no idea how great we had it back then. Took it for granted. Did you ever have to wear the smock to paint? Oh, we had to wear the smock in kindergarten. Yeah, that was something. It was very embarrassing. I never liked my smock. And I, oh, we had to bring a smock. And um, they recommended we bring one of your dad's old shirts. And it could be an old t-shirt or an old business shirt, but it had to be something you could put over your clothes and bigger than you. So basically you put on this, um, I think I brought a, a business shirt for my dad and it just hung down to the floor and the arms were way too long and it was just, it was just plum silly looking. <laughs> and then of course I waddled up to attempt my artwork. Oh my God, you know. Um, let's just say they, they just pushed me towards the science fields after that. And they said, no, no, silly miss. What are you doing here? You don't belong with the art people, <laughs> please. Um, your, their, your right side of your brain is not developed yet. Go away. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, that was pretty much how that went. Um, so if you liked art when you were a kid, do you, did you get positive reinforcement from your family from your mom and dad from the art or was it considered you know unimportant in my family art didn't get a lot of heralding um it wasn't it, nobody ever talked about it nobody ever did it we didn't we didn't really hang out and do crafts or anything like that now i did crafts on my own as a kid i was a single um only child so me doing crafts was a way to entertain myself and I would ask my mom during the, you know, the summer holidays, could she send me to the Y? They had these six-week little, you know, basically get rid of your kid for six weeks, like daily classes or something. And um, often they were, um, you know, making the macaroni necklaces or the leather wallets, um, that kind of stuff. And uh, that was fun. I mean, I like doing that stuff. Um, but there wasn't a lot of support. But I have talked to many of you like over the internet, and um, you said that you did have parents that were supportive of your art, or art, and I think that's pretty cool. Um, and uh, I wish my mom would have experienced it more. I think she would have enjoyed it. Um, she did do a, a short stint of drawing, very short. But uh, yeah, she was exploring it for a while there, and I was like, oh, that's so awesome, mom. And I wish I could find those pictures. Again. I don't know where they went to, but um, um, hmm. um, yeah, that would be neat. Yeah, I, I think everybody should give it a go. And people say they're not crafty. It's not true. They just haven't, they haven't played enough with the stuff because I think there's a crafter in all of us. I really do. That's my theory. Because really it's just, it's creating something I, maybe originally for a purpose or something pretty with a purpose or... Maybe just something pretty. You didn't have, have to have a purpose. Um, you're just creating something. And uh, yeah, I'm going to make those. That's kind of cool, right? Um, let's answer another question. And then let's go ahead and pick our fabulous winner here. Um, okay, answered that one. I never missed a craft chat, Ginny S. says. I love your ideas. Do you ever use brads as a closure mechanism? Just wondering. Um, yes, I have. And uh, they're great. And I, I should demonstrate that on a video. But you can... Um, 
Um, if you can put something under the brad so it gives it a little bit of a neck, it's much easier to wrap whatever it is you're using around. Like you can punch out little um, pieces of um, uh, almost, they look like reinforcements, like donuts. And um, then you can color them. You can, um, uh, and they're a little bit thicker. You can put a couple of them there and you can use the string to do that, you know, that th this thing. And then you end up doing that. You can do that. That was another great demonstration, huh? Should people have no idea what you're talking about? I'll show you. And, and there's lots of videos out there showing this technique. Um, I think Nick the booksmith likes to use that type of closure for any kinds of flaps or things like that in her, her um, uh, decorating of journals. She does that. And, um, but I, I, that's a nice process too. So I will put that on the remember to show that and have some fun with that. And um, let's go ahead and pick our winner. Okay, we have 488 comments from last Friday's craft chat. If you want to be entered into the next craft chat, just put a comment under this video. You're welcome to put more than one comment to increase your odds of winning. So these odds are better than winning the lottery, but I think I have some pretty cool scraps. And if you're interested in getting a nice collection of scraps from the Paper Outpost, um, go ahead and just post your comment down below. But this, now I'm picking from last week's video. Here we go. Watch the names. Watch, oh, I'm, I'm clicking on my phone. That's silly. Okay, go, 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 go. Oh, you can barely see. Oh, what am I doing? Uh, oh, I can't even see the winner. Let's slide it up. Oh, Tammy Aiken. There you go. Um, yay for another Scrappy Friday. Love working with buttons. Thanks for all you do, Pam. Tammy, congratulations. All I need you to do is um, email me at pam at thepaperoutpost.com. And uh, let me know that you won this week's uh, Scrap Cat uh, contest and uh, give me your address to send the package to and that's it. There you go. Okay, hold on. Okay, so if you don't know, I have a free monthly emailed newsletter which gives you a checklist of supplies, a note from the bookmaker, a free digital image emailed to you. Hello. No, that's not Sunny. Yeah, we want to talk too. No, it's not your turn. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> and... Um, a page list of ideas for your junk journals. Uh, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. And my podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays with new audio. New audio. And then I have um, on the other days of the week. Oh, excuse me. Am I, am I keeping you awake? Always. <laughs> okay. And uh, um, uh, it's video podcasts on Spotify if you want to watch them or you can listen to them on your favorite podcast um, platform. Um, I have an Etsy shop. Hey, oh, here we go again. Mom, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> um, I have an Etsy shop where uh, you may find journals and bundles when they're ready. Okay, well, you just want to go to sleep with uh, Bunny. Okay, there we go. I have both of you there. I, I have a sidekick today. I have my own sidekick. Yes, this is a uh, bunny. And um, I have journals and bundles when they are ready. I sell digikits, which are printable downloads of uh, themed images, all very fun for making junk journals. I try to make them easy to cut out. And I have oh, about, uh, uh, isn't that cute? Why can't I have, when both of my arms are occupied. I would love to take a snapshot of that right now. Um, and uh, um, if you don't like to print or you don't have a printer, you can still get them. And I do have a print and mail service where if you give me the names of 10 of the digi kits, I only need the first couple words, I will print them out for you and mail them to you for a flat fee, which includes free priority mail shipping and it comes on nice lightweight card stock. Um, so it's nice and ready to make pockets or journal cards and things like that. And um, if you like fundals, which are collections of old and interesting paper like antique ledger and old checks and receipts and postcards and photos and all sorts of fun stuff, um, music pages, dictionary pages. Um, yeah, there's a lot of paper. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, he watches me walk back and forth and back and forth. She walks a lot. <laughs> okay. It's my exercise. Um, otherwise, I'd never get out of the craft chair. Um, those are there um, for you to have. There's over 100 plus pieces in each fundal. And that also includes free priority shipping at the flat rate. And... Um, I have an Amazon shop. If you're looking for favorite tools and supplies, I try and put links in there so you can have an um, uh, easy place to find the details and stuff. And if you purchase through there, you don't pay more for the items, but that does help out my shop. Thank you very much for everybody who's purchased. I have a merchandise shop or a t-shirt shop. If you like t-shirts and sweatshirts and zip hoodies, and maybe you like the phrase create with reckless abandon, or 
everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise. You can get that on one of those items, a mug, a toad, a water bottle, zip toady, you name it. Um, great for gift giving this time of year uh, for yourself or for a loved one. Um, you can find me on Pinterest, in Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Facebook group. Come and join our Facebook group. We're going to have a lot, lot of fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, we are. And we're getting ideas from each other. Yep, yep, we are. And uh, seeing what you guys make from these videos. Oh, my gosh, you guys are awesome. And uh, totally awesome. <laughs> and uh, most of all, Sunny, do you have anything to say? I had a bath. I had a little bath and it, it wasn't so bad. And Bunny got a bath. He got thrown in the washer with all the other toys. I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but everything came out all right in the wash. Yes, everybody got washed, right? Yep. It was necessary. Okay. Um, there you go, folks. Remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon. And we'll all talk to you next time. Yeah, we'll have a lot more to say. More pup dates coming soon. Take care, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Oh, sunny bumpkins. Mm-hmm. <laughs>